Brian, can I get you something to put on? How about a candy? Hey, you like the mango? See, if you take the mango, I get the tangerine one underneath. stay in here, but we had no place to put it up. How long will I be here? Just overnight. Uh, tomorrow they're going to transfer you to juvenile hall. Brian, is there anything you'd like to say? I said? Yeah, get in front of the ball and keep my body low. And your butt down. Just remember, only a few people are born athletes. The rest of us have to work at it. Like your third baseman there, what's his name? Buddy. All right, now that kid hustles. He lets him know he's there, and he's always in the starting lineup. He also bats 300. That's well, because he works at it. Look at your brother. Didn't he ever share problems last year with his team? Look how he shaped up. Started every game this season, Dad. He sure did. He might not put me in today. Of course he will. Why do you say that? Because I made two errors last game. Okay. So you get in there and you practice. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Mary C. Davis Little League Park. Big game today for both the Yankees and the Giants. The Yankees are on top of the division, but the okay, Giants Yankees, are Yankees, bring it in here. They're only one I'll game back now. Come on, team, gather around. Okay, Joe, you're catching. Punkin, first base. Vaughn, second base. Gill, shortstop. Buddy, third base. Josh, you're pitching. Jessica, left field. And the Yankees take the field. DJ, center. Armando, right field. Okay, Yankees, come on, let's play ball. Okay, bottom of the first. Yankees up by a run.
Walt took a bad hop. Yeah, but you could have got it if you would have moved in towards the plate, like Dad said. I did, dummy. No, you didn't. You waited for the ball to come to you. Then it was too late because the guy was already... Shut up! Okay, guys, knock it off. We'll stop over the medical center. Have them take a look at it. Okay, honey. I took him to emergency. It's just a sprain. Kid ran into him on second base. Oh, honey. Here, let me help you get inside and just try to keep the pressure off if you can. Okay. Does it hurt? Okay. I'm going to make you a nice pack. You okay? Oh, Brian, I'll fix your place over here on the couch. I want to go up to my room. Oh, come on, you'd be much more comfortable here. I'll put on the TV, order in some pizzas. I want to go upstairs. What was that all about? I don't know. He takes everything so hard. Does it hurt? No. And why were you limping? Because I was. Well, did it hurt when you fell? Keith, will you lay off? I was just asking a question. Stop asking the stupid questions. Keith, we leave those earphones alone. Bry, do you think you'll be able to play next week's game? I don't know, Keith. Will you give me those? You're going to break them. Here, hand them over. Give me them. Well, if your foot's not better, you know... Okay. Okay, take your dumb earphones. Who wants them anyway? Hey, Keith, come on. we got to get to work on that car. Okay, Dad. No, no, Keith, don't release it. Keep your foot on the brake. You're letting air back in the line. Okay? Yeah, that's got it. How about a bacon and tomato sandwich, honey? Sound good? Dad's mad at me. Oh? Why do you say that? Well, because I made an error today. I don't think he's angry with you. You know your father. He just thinks you guys are special. He wants only the best for you. It's nine o'clock. When are you quitting? I'm just finishing up now. How's Brian? I just gave him another ice pack. He says you're angry with him because he didn't do well in the game. It's not that at all, Kate. Look, I don't care if he doesn't play that foul. He should just try. He doesn't put himself out there. Not like Keith. Why must he be like Keith? Why must he be like anyone? Kate, it was a simple ground ball. He let it slip right through his legs. He gave up. Just like the other times. He's a kid, for God's sake. Aren't you being a little hard on him? Honey, I don't want Brian to sell himself short. That boy's got a lot going for him. He just doesn't listen. Sometimes I think he even resents me. Oh. Yeah. Can't you see that he thinks you're disappointed in him? Gordon, you gotta let up on the kid. What do you want me to do? I want you to go upstairs and talk to him. 
and let him know that what happened today was not a catastrophe. Hey, big guy. How's the ankle? Okay. Doesn't hurt. Looks like the swelling's gone down a bit. You'll be on your feet in a few days. Listen, Brian, I want to talk to you about something. You know, that error you made today, and I know the pressure was... Dad, amazing. I just don't think I'm good at baseball. Now, how can you say that? You remember a couple of weeks ago that line drive you caught? That was sensational. But I'm not in the starting lineup. It's because you don't work at it. You got to work at it, Brian. Listen, no one promised it was going to be easy. But I lost a game for us. Come today. on, what the hell is that? Look at your brother. You never hear him talk that way. Look at him now. Top ranking in his league. Dad. At least I show an interest, Brian. My father never gave a damn about me. Yeah, but. But just maybe I should sit out the rest of the season. You won't practice like you said. I want to tell you something. If you quit at this, you're going to quit at everything in life. No. No, I'm not going to quit. Oh, well, you young. You don't realize these things stay with you. When I was your age, boy, Dad, I'm I trying to explain I... something, Brian. What is this? Are these the headphones I gave you for Christmas? I want to see how they work. I can put them back together. Sorry for you, cause let the ball go through your leg. He's a better player than you are. Yeah, he's so good he lost a game for us. So what? So cut the act, phony. It's all over. Go on. Come on. Let's go inside, huh? You want to tell me about it? Come on, kid. Let it out. Obviously, he said something that upset you. Doesn't help to bottle it up, you know. I hurt my ankle and Gil said I was faking it. <laughs> well, that's his problem. You know you did. I do. I believe you. Is that ever going to report me? <laughs> to who? The FBI? You don't look that dangerous to me. Besides, I'm not going to turn in one of my best students. Who else can I count on to ask me challenging questions in class? Hmm? Keep me on my toes. Yep. Yeah. Speaking. Why? Oh, come on. That's ridiculous. It was over. All right. All right. Principal wants to see you. 
Gill reported the fight. All right, Keith, here we go. Bend your knees, bend your knees. Get low, good, good, good. Uh, all right. Terrific, here we go. Dig, 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 dig. Yeah, good, Dad. That's terrific. Just remember to stay in that set position. Brian, come on, it's almost game time. You're still not in your uniform. Dig, 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 dig. Come on. Brian? Dad? I don't want to play. What do you mean? I don't want to be on the team. Oh, Brian. Well, what is it, because that kid came down here? Come on, don't worry about him. Just go out there and show him you can hustle. I don't want to play. I'm going to be with you. Look, you just go out there and hang in there, play this game, and we'll talk about it when we come home, okay? Gordon? Your office is calling. Throw your brother some grounders. Brian? You never gonna play again? Why aren't you ever gonna play? So if the deal falls through... It is not gonna fall through. If this completely safe deal falls through, they could foreclose and take the house. Come on, Kate. The bank's not going to foreclose. That's idiotic. You just said they could. All right. Conceivably, they can. It's not going to happen. Don't you think we should have discussed this? That's the way my business is, Kate. You know that. There are times you have to make an immediate decision. That's what I did. You could have called me. A simple phone call. I made the best choice I could. It's important to me you believe that. I'd believe it better if you hadn't done the same thing three years ago. When are you going to stop beating me up for that? Three years ago, it was different. And we didn't get hurt, did we? No, but we could have, and you know it. Well, then, if you're not going to talk, throw me some practice balls. Leave me alone. But Dad said that he wants... I said lay off! I'm going to tell him! I can't believe you didn't consult me. Dad? What? Brian hit me. He did what? With the ball. He hit me in the back. Brian? Why did you hit your brother? I'm talking to you. What is going on with you? I don't know. Don't you ever pull a stunt like that around here again. Do you understand? Look at me! Do you? Yes. Did you ask him? Who? Who, your father? Oh, uh, I forgot. You forgot? How could you forget? Look, Brian, you're gonna have to talk with him. Or I'm gonna have to ask someone else. Roger's coming with his father. He is? Yeah, they go camping a lot, so they know all about it. My dad said if you and your dad come, we can take the van, and we can rent some tents. Now, wouldn't that be neat? You won't go. Why not? He's, he's too busy. How do you know? Just ask him. Yes. Come here, give me a hand with this, will you? Take 
Yes, I... I want to get this over to the table. So Mr. Johnson let you up, huh? How'd you know? I spoke to him. Wanted to put a good word in for you. Thanks. <laughs> You'll have to thank me. He planned to anyway. How are you and Gil? You talking or are you still on the outs? I don't see him. I'm not in the baseball team anymore. Oh? Why not? Brian. Anything wrong? No. Sure. See, um... I get the feeling there's something bothering you. If there is, maybe I can help. Okay. okay. Here. I want you to hold him a minute. <laughs> you know your way around rabbits, don't you? Uh, what are you going to do with them when we're done with them? I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. You want it? Can I? Only if you intend to keep him. We take our rabbits very seriously around here. We don't give them out on loan. <laughs> I'll keep him. All right, then. He's yours. As long as it's cool with your parents. Wow, where'd you get the rabbit? Mr. McMahon gave it to me. Well, what are you going to do with him? I'm going to take him home. Mr. McMahon's cousin. Are you going to keep him? Yeah. Oh, Brian, you can't. Remember when I wanted a rabbit? That's not in the house. They're dirty. I'm not going to keep him in the house. I'm going to keep him in the shed. I mean, Dad hardly ever goes you mean in you're there. You're not going to ask him? Oh, Brian, you've got to ask him. I wonder if he doesn't want to keep him. I mean, my teacher gave him to me. Brian, no, you can't. Well, do you want him? I mean, because he's yours, too. I mean, he'll belong to the both of us. But Dad's going to find out. No, not if you don't tell him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's going to rain. We better get him in. <sighs> he's going to be afraid, though, all over the rain and stuff. Think so? Brian? Brian, where are you going? Look at him. Oh, no. Get him. 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 Didn't you notice the windows downstairs were open? Huh? Come on, what's going on? Nothing. Nothing? You call this nothing? Dad, I told Brian! I told him what? 
stolen what? What are you talking about? What's wrong? Look at this. I didn't do it, Dad. Didn't do what? What's going on? Where'd you get him, Brian? My teacher. When? When? This afternoon, Brian kept him in the shed. You knew about this? I didn't want the robber. He made me. Oh, yeah, you are lying. I am not. All right, you walked on. I am not. What did I tell you about having pets in the house? Why do you do this? Nothing I ever say gets through to you. Gordon, it's not important. He'll take him back. Right. I want that rabbit out of here in the morning. I want you to take him, put him back in his cage. I want you to take him back to your teacher tomorrow. I can't. He'll get mad. I don't care what... This is my house, and as long as you're living here, you'll do as I say. Gordon, it's not a big Please, deal. Dad, I just can't take him back. No, I don't even want to hear that. You're going to listen to me. No. Gordon! You get rid of that thing. I want it out of here by the time I get home tomorrow. Do you understand? Find someone else to take the rabbit? No. Well, did you explain to him why you couldn't keep it, son? I didn't give the rabbit to my teacher. I don't understand. Brian? Where's the rabbit? Behind the tree out back. Brian, your father found the rabbit buried. Did you do that? Do you realize what you've done? You told me to get rid of it. I didn't say to kill it! Spite. That's all it was, spite. I don't know yet how I'm going to deal with you, but right now I want you to go to your room and you stay there. You're not to leave. Is that clear? You'll go to school and that's it. 
The rest of the time, I want you to stay put in this house. Go on! Gordon, I'm scared. I know Brian is a complicated kid, but... what he did with that rabbit was so terrible. It was just an incident. An incident? Gordon, there is something very wrong here. And we need to see someone who can advise us. I gotta tell us it's already happened. There's an incident and we'll handle it. How? How will we handle it, Gordon? I don't know. You and Brian can't even talk to each other, for God's sake. We'll handle it. I don't think we can, Gordon. Not by ourselves. It's been hours, and he should have been home long before now. Yes, would you, please? Thank you. Please put it out on the radio. Come back. Yes, of course. What are you doing out of bed? Hmm? Come on. Back to sleep. Oh, Dad. Come on. Can I stay back up? Brian? Brian. Where 
were you? Are you all right? You had us scared to death. We have the whole city looking for you. Where were you? The train station. What? What for? I was going to run away. I don't want to live here anymore. I don't like it here. Oh, you want to go, big shot? Huh? Go ahead, go. Gordon, don't. The go ahead, pack your bags. No one's stopping Gordon. you. You want more money? You didn't steal enough from your mother, huh? Okay, here's some more money. Here, go on. Go on! Take it, take it, Jim, and I'll help you pack. Stop it! Come on! Gordon, stop it! Come on, Gordon. big shot. Gordon, Come on. stop! This is insane! Go pack, huh? Well, what's the matter? Let's go. You want some help? I'll help you. Here. You want some more shirts? Huh? You want some more shirts? Here. You want some underwear? Stop it, Gordon! Huh? You've gone crazy! Oh, what's the matter? I thought you wanted to leave. I don't have any place to go. It's late. Come to bed. What you did was horrible. How you could do that to your own son. Gordon, I can't take much more of this. What the hell am I supposed to do? I've tried every way I know how to reach him. Everything I've done has been for him. And what the hell's he do? Fight me. My God, when I was his age... Well, he's not you. You want him to be you, but he can't. And you've got to realize that once and for all and just stop this. I think tomorrow might be a good day to take you guys out and get you some summer things. What's that? This? Well, um... Look, I've been under a lot of pressure lately, and I thought, since your kids are out of school now... Well, anyway, I called, and they said it was a little late, but that they still had a few cabins left up at the lake. And I... I thought, what a perfect opportunity for us to get away, just the four of us. Great! Okay. Great. Huh?
our boats? Yep, the speedboat and the skiff. Uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, Keith. Unpacking first. Sorry, Dad. Unpacking. Brian, look. Look, I know we've had some rough times, but let's put that all behind us, okay? Let's have a good time. What do you say? Come on. that float? Oh, probably 50 yards. But I can swim it. Keith, you are not to swim out there alone. Is that clear? Dad, that's now easy. listen to both of you. I don't want you taking the boats out alone, understood? And I don't want you swimming alone. Brian can't swim. Well, we can change that. Maybe I can teach Brian to swim. It's a perfect opportunity. You know, if you don't learn by the end of the summer, huh? Uh, do I have to? No, you don't. But it's been, uh, what, four or five years since? What do we call it? It wasn't an accident. A what, a, a scare? It's about time you dealt with it. I'm not scared. Paul. Well, what's holding you back? Hmm? Look, I, I'm not pushing you some, but uh, soon you're going to be in high school or college, and all your friends will know how to swim. Ryan? I can teach you. Want me to Mind teach your you? your business. What I say? All I, I say. Who cares all right, what you say? All right, said. you guys, knock it off. Knock it off. Come on, what do you say? We could start this afternoon. N nothing big. Just a short lesson. Just a break in. Hmm? You remember when Keith started? Oh my God, we couldn't get him to stick his toe in the water. He was so afraid. Dad, I wasn't afraid. Sure you were. Now look at him. Five minutes in there and a team of wild horses couldn't pull him out. Come on, what do you say? Brian? No. Can you help me with this bow line? Dad, you going for a ride? Yeah, sure, hop in. Get your life vest on. Keith, listen to me. Put the life vest on. All right, Dad. Let's go. Ready? Yeah. Hold on to you. Why didn't you go with him? Dad didn't want me. What happened? Did something happen? He wants to teach me to swim. He won't tell him to stop. says you want to teach him to swim. I simply asked him if he wanted to learn to swim. You don't realize what you're doing, okay. do you? The boy had a near drowning. He was going under. If the lifeguard if hadn't the been lifeguard there... Was well, the there. worst thing you could do now is to push him. Is what I'm asking so unreasonable? It's for his own good, Kate. If he backs off now, he'll never face his fears. He'll learn when he's ready. You know why he's still afraid of the water? because of you. 
because you feed his fear. Oh, no, it's you my indulge his about. fears. You make it seem all right. Well, that'll smooth things now, but I'm telling you, down the road, it's going to hurt him. Maybe you're right. Maybe I do. I don't know. I do know that Brian is feeling very alone right now. Maybe that's my fault as much as it is yours. But I'm telling you, Gordon, this pressure on him... What pressure? What stop. pressure? We have got to end this now or else... What? Or else what? I'm coming with you. We need to talk this out. Mom? Uh-huh. Where are you going? We're just going into town to get some stuff for dinner. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. Dad, give me a surprise. Maybe. <laughs> oh, will ya? We'll see, Keith. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, Bye. Want to play catch? No. Mr. Lewis said he's going to put me in the starting lineup next season. Well, want to ride bikes? No. I bet Dad's going to get me water skis. He's going to teach me to water ski, but not you, because you can't swim. Well, you're not so great. I'm better than you. I'm not afraid of the water. Are you afraid of Dad? No. Brian, can I come? Watch it! Gonna sit here? Maybe. Keith! Hey, are you gonna stop? Ray? No! Yes, you are. I don't see you in the water either. I can swim. You know that, dummy. Not to the dock. I bet you can't swim to the dock. What's the matter? 
afraid. No. Well, let me see you do it. See, you are afraid. No, not with your life jacket. Anybody can swim with your life jacket on. But you can't swim without it. Stay with me, okay? In case I get tired. Okay? Okay. Brian? Brian, stop fooling around. You keep it up. Oh, Brian, come on. Brian, I'm gonna tell Dad. Kate, the boat's gone.
get the boy inside. Get you something? Glass of water or something? Look, Brian. I know that this is a rough time, but we have to ask you a few questions. You see, uh, we got all this paperwork we got to fill out, and you're the only one that can help us. So I just need for you to tell us what happened. Brian? Material witness to the accident, he'll need to be questioned further. Now? Why now? He can't answer your questions now. We'll go easy. It's standard procedure. Why, why can't you question him here? I'm sorry. We'll get him out of there as soon as we can, but we do have to take him in. Uh, one of us should stay. I'll, I'll go. Your son has the right to speak to an attorney, of course, and have an attorney present during the questioning. Why would he want a lawyer? He doesn't need a lawyer, for God's sake. He's a kid. All right, we can get on with this then. Want to come in here, Brian? I'm sorry, Mrs. Williams. You'll have to wait here. said that Keith was tired and uh, he asked for the life jacket and you had it in your hand and you were about to throw it but you held back. Why? Uh, I don't know. Well, how long did you wait before you threw it to him? Three minutes? Five minutes? What would you say? I don't know. Yeah, but then finally you did. You did. You threw him the life jacket. Why? He was yelling. He was scared. You waited until he was drowning and then you threw him the life jacket, but it was too late? Or did you wait until after he had gone under, after it was over? Is that it? You realized what you had done? You were scared and you threw the life jacket in the water? 
to cover yourself? Is that what happened? Mrs. Williams. We're going to have to keep him here. What do you mean? Overnight? He's being booked on voluntary manslaughter. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that Brian was involved at least in a contributory way in your son's death. Do you realize what you're saying? There's possible evidence that Brian withheld the life jacket from him. I don't have to listen to this. Come on, Brian, let's go. But your son can't be released. He's got to be held in custody until the detention hearing. Mrs. Williams, I'm sorry, but your son's being charged with his brother's death. No! You make this insane accusation against my son, and you expect me to stand here and listen to you? Your son admitted it. I'm Sarah Burke. I'm your lawyer. Brian, I'm sorry they put you in this awful place. And I'm going to get you out of here as soon as I can. But first, I read the sheriff's report about what you told him. And Brian, you said some things that could be very hurtful. I want you to promise me that you won't talk to anyone again about what happened. Not anyone. Without my presence. Okay? Now, we have to go over the statements that you made to the sheriff. Get things straight. According to this, you threw the life jacket into the water after your brother went under. No. Oh. What do you mean, no? No, I threw it in before. Well, Brian, why did you make this statement to the sheriff? anymore. This is our private business. What are you talking about? Peggy's my friend. She wants to comfort me. We just buried our son.
There seems to be sufficient evidence to uh, move onward with this case. The court will set a trial date for August 30. The minor will be detained until such... Your time. Honor, counsel would like to move that the minor be released into the custody of his parents. This is a serious crime, Counselor. We can assure the court the controls and protections will be set up so that he does not disobey the law. It has nothing to do with breaking the law. The boy has been accused of contributing to the death of another boy. In this case, his brother. The boy has no history of previous crimes, and he has a protective environment he can go to. The court is willing to consider the minor be released home during this interim period, but on condition that the child enter into a program of therapy and that his family cooperate by participating in the treatment as well. If either of these conditions is not met, I'll be forced to bring the boy back and detain him. No. I'll be damned if I'm seeing a psychologist. Mr. Williams, if you don't, your son will be returned to police custody, placed in a juvenile hall, along with some of the most violent kids in the county. Is that what you want for him? What happens now? There'll be a police investigation into the what charges. What kind of investigation? Probably question neighbors, friends, anyone who's known the boys to determine what kind of relationship oh, they have. they the whole world in on this, are they? Make it a public exhibition. Put us on display, is that it? I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do about that. I'm Dr. Hamilton. I thought we could just get to know each other and take it real slow, okay? Do you know why you're here? Because the judge said I had to come. Yeah, that's true. But more than that, I'm going to try and help you feel better. How do you feel about being here? A little scared? Let me tell you what I think. You look very unhappy to me. I mean, that's just how it looks, okay? But if you are feeling unhappy, maybe I can help it go away. My brother's dead. Yeah, I know. And I'm real sorry. You want to talk about it? Put your wait out here for a minute, okay? Come on inside. Considering the enormity of what happened, it's going to be tough to get your son through this. He's holding in a tremendous amount of guilt. Because he's afraid we'll think he wanted to harm his brother. Because he knows he wanted to harm him. Why? That's what we're going to try and get at. What's going on? What are you thinking? I'm... Confused. I thought after a few weeks I'd feel differently. But I can't help it. I'm still so angry with him for what he did. Sometimes I look at him and I... I hate him. And he's my son. Mrs. Williams, what Brian did, it came out of jealousy and anger, and it went farther than even he ever imagined. And right now he is shouldering all the blame. But it's not just Brian. The guilt is a family guilt, and that's why it's very important. We've got to get your husband in here right now. He won't come. I've got to make a status report in two days. I'm required by law to inform the court of your husband's decision. I can tell you right now, when the judge reads it, he 
He's going to send your son to juvenile hall. Brian and I went to the psychologist today. There's something I haven't wanted to face, Gordon. And I was able to with Dr. Hamilton's help. We knew what was happening. And we could have stopped it. And I'll never forgive myself. Gordon, you have to see him. You have to. If you don't, Brian could be taken from this home and put into an isolation cell. Well, that's where Dr. Hamilton said they put boys that are charged with voluntary manslaughter. And if you don't cooperate, it could influence the judge's final decision. I'll never put Brian in prison. Gordon, Brian told Hamilton about the rabbit, that he killed it in a very deliberate act. The district attorney and the judge don't know that yet, but they will find out. And Hamilton says when they do, it will destroy Brian's defense. I've been running this through my head over and over. And I think there's only one way to go that's in Brian's best interest. We've got to avoid a trial. I want to plead him. What does that mean? Plead him to a lesser charge. Involuntary manslaughter. But if we plead him, they'll put him away. It'll be nothing compared to what he might get if he's convicted of voluntary manslaughter. If they could ship him off to a youthful offender facility. Keep him there till he's 18. You want to risk that? I don't want Brian facing that judge. He already hung himself once. He agreed with the sheriff that he threw the life jacket in after Keith went under. So you think we stand the best chance by pleading him? All things considered, yes. Maybe it is the best way to go. The probation officer called today. The judge will be getting the status report in the morning. We still have a chance to keep Brian out of juvenile hall. If you start seeing Dr. Hamilton. But what is some shrink going to say to me? What the hell am I going to tell him that's going to make any difference? Do it for Brian. Damn it. He's your son, too. His brother's dead. He took him out in the boat and he let him drown. I can't forgive him for that. Then we have no life together. What are you talking about? If you believe that, there's nowhere we can go. This marriage is over. What? I can't order you out of the house, but for Brian's sake, I hope you'll leave. Cake. If you don't, I will. I want you out of here as soon as you find someplace else, but I want you to go. Come on. Don't touch me. Oh, God. What did I do? How did I let this happen? Where did he go? Well, is he coming back? I don't think so. His dad left because of me. No. No, Brian, this is something that's been coming for a long time. Well, he wouldn't have left if Keith was still alive. <laughs> I didn't want him to die. I know. I know that. <laughs> I loved him. He's dead and that's never coming back. It's all my fault. All my fault. <laughs>
Brian. Peggy baked a chocolate cake. Double Dutch chocolate, your favorite. I brought you a big piece. You awake, honey? <laughs> Come on, Brian, you can't sleep. Brian? Oh, my God. How is he? He'll make it. His body's had a terrible shock, but they say he'll be all right. It's upstairs. I don't know what to say to him, Kate. For starters, you can tell him you're sorry he tried to kill himself. Why'd he do it? You're angry with them, aren't you? Even for this. I don't know what I feel, God. You feel manipulated, Gordon? You feel like he's saying, here, I've done this terrible thing to myself, now I want you to forgive me and love me for it. That's it. That's exactly what he's saying. <laughs> You know, I don't believe in any of this. I don't think it solves anything. Just want you to know that from the outset, okay? Okay. Look, I know my wife has uh, talked to you and Brian, so you know about this whole ungodly mess. And I know you know she wants a divorce. Fourteen years of marriage. Never unfaithful. Give her everything she ever wanted. And this tragedy hits us and she wants a divorce. 
Do you want a divorce? No. I love Keith. If you had known him, he's always pleasing people, trying to fit in. And Brian? Brian always fought me. I don't know why. I tried. When I think about my brother, I'm not jealous of him anymore. I mean, it's not his fault that I liked him better. Nothing I said ever got through to him. It was always over. Always in his own world. We never connected. God, I feel terrible about that. Suppose you don't believe that. How do you feel about your father now? Do you love him? I want to. You want him to love you? Yeah. You think he does? Do you think he wants to? I don't know. But I want him to. You know the thing with children that sometimes we lose sight of? They're not here to please us. No matter how they turn out, sometimes it's an accident. You can give them everything you have. That doesn't make them turn out the way you want them to. You see, with Brian, he never gave you back the thing you really wanted. And that can cause a lot of resentment. And on top of that, there's Keith's death. I don't know if I can ever get past that. Not enough to forgive Brian? I know he's in a lot of pain. And I want very much to stop that pain. I don't know how. Tell him. I've been through the reports of the probation officer and the psychologist. Now, what happened was a tragic thing. Crime was committed. And a life is lost. And that, unfortunately, cannot be reversed. But to submit the minor to any prolonged period of detention would, in effect, be another crime. It would not serve him or the community. Therefore, I am sentencing you, Brian, to a one-year rehabilitative period of detention and training at the State Youth Authority. And I'm suspending that order, placing you on probation with the requirement that you remain in treatment and was 90 day reports to this court by your probation officer. It is so ordered.
man. I'm sorry, son. And I don't blame you for anything. And I love you. 